In this video, we give you an introduction. I give you an introduction to droplets, and uh, we go over Jung's law first, then uh, the Laplace law, then capillary pressure, and then we talk about surfactants. And uh, the practical applications of droplets will come in another lecture. So this is just uh, an introduction to fluid mechanics. So why why would we use droplets at all? Uh, and we, we have already, uh, or, or so far we have talked only about uh, continuous flow. Uh, the reason for using droplets is because uh, then you have an excellent control over droplets if you have um, um, a population of droplets that are of the same volume, which we also refer to as monodisperse droplets, where they have a low uh, polydispersity, which means a low um, distribution of, uh, of volumes. So the volumes of the droplets, uh, if they are uniform enough, then you have a well-quantified uh, volume. And each of these can react in chemical separation. So they are essentially tiny micro-reactors themselves. And uh, with a bunch of these tiny micro-reactors, you can implement a packed bed reactor, which um, is often used in uh, the chemical industry. Uh, and then, once you have generated and filled these uh, droplets, you can also store them. So, you can even incubate uh, bacteria, for instance, in these uh, uh, droplets, as you will see in the later lecture. And then, Regarding channel geometries, you have a wide choice and uh, you can even interact with these droplets with, uh, with electrodes or with, uh, with mechanical means. But uh, you can parallelize channels and uh, then, then you can collect them and store them over time. So lots of, uh, of options, but there are also technical challenges. So I introduced uh, the monodispersity term um, and we usually define it as a coefficient of variation in uh, percentages, the lower the better. Uh, then we have also the challenge of uh, the generation rate, how many droplets we can produce per unit time, then their stability, and this is where surfactants will come into play. But uh, let's first talk about uh, fluid mechanics. Uh, if you do not apply any surfactant, then these droplets are only held together by uh, fluid mechanics, by forces. Then also the minimum droplet volume that you can achieve is a challenge. So Jung's law, and this is why I introduced the uh, contact angles to you. So the contact angle that the liquid interface closes with the solid surface is denoted uh, theta, and uh, the unit that we use for this is degrees. And it is expressed as follows. From this, you can uh, reorganize and get the definition of the contact angle that I showed in the last uh, video, uh, if you remember. And uh, then from this, the work of adhesion can be derived, which uh, looks like this. And what this means to us is over here. So if we look at the work of adhesion, then it is possible to have a super hydrophobic contact, which means it is really strongly water repellent. Uh, as cosine theta approaches to minus one, the work of adhesion will approach to zero. So we have uh, no uh, work of adhesion uh, binding the liquid to the surface on which it rests. This will be important in the fifth lecture, as, as you will see later. Uh, and we can also have a super hydrophilic contact, in theory at least, uh, where cosine theta approaches one and the work of adhesion will approach infinity. Um, this is also uh, theoretically possible at least. Uh, 
and uh, a pendant drop. So what this means is uh, just think about your tap at home. If you close it, last drop of uh, water will hang out out of it. That is a pendant drop. So close up looks like this. And again, radius of the drop, inner uh, pressure and outer pressure or internal and external pressure. And um, for this, Laplace law is um, a definition of the pressure difference um, inside and outside of the droplet that is defined as uh, a fraction of the surface tension and the radius of the droplet. Then from this, we can get the jung laplace uh, equation, which uh, defines this pressure difference in relation to the uh, density, gravity, and uh, the length, the uh, height of the liquid column, and uh, then surface tension. And um, so this is a bit more complex now. Uh, now we define uh, uh, two radii of uh, the circle that we draw around uh, this uh, hanging droplet. And what the jung laplace law is about, or this expression is about, is a relation between hydrostatic pressure and surface tension. And this is also how you can define uh, the surface tension experimentally. Then uh, capillary forces between parallel plates. Uh, why is this important? It's important because you can uh, perceive or conceive of the channels as parallel plates. Uh, so the Laplace law for the free interface between these plates is defined as such. We will get to that in a moment. So you have plate one, plate two, and uh, the forces of adhesion acting on your uh, liquid. This is the meniscus. And there are these uh, contact angles between the midline and uh, the, the wall. And then uh, this is the radius of this meniscus. And this is the height, half height of uh, your, um, your pipe or your channel. Then uh, the relation looks like this. So uh, what we can express from this is uh, that the pressure drop between uh, the two sides of, uh, of your pipe or the interior and the exterior of, uh, of your uh, liquid is like this. It is related here to the surface tension, uh, contact angle, the height of your pipe, and the radius of, uh, of your uh, meniscus. And then the capillary pressure is uh, possible to, uh, to approximate as such. The capillary force can be expressed from this as the following. So why do I have all this? This one, this capillary force, is dragging on your liquid. Either it is pulling it forward or it is limiting the movement that you try to introduce uh, in a different direction, opposite to, to where it would uh, uh, take the liquid by itself. And uh, in this channel, we have water and air, uh, so it's a, a, a slug flow. And um, so this force can be expressed from the diameter uh, not the diameter, but uh, the, the radius of the meniscus, the uh, contact angle, surface tension, and the height of your channel. Therefore, in this simple example, uh, we have, um, if, if the channel has a height of uh, 10 microns and uh, the radius of your meniscus is one centimeter, then uh, the adhesive force would be 2.5 newtons or capillary force. Now uh, about surfactants that can hold our droplets together. A surfactant consists of uh, a hydrophilic head 
and a hydrophobic tail. So head that sticks to water and a head that doesn't stick to water, to put it like this. So the hydrophobic tail likes to stick to oil and fat and grease and, and so on. The hydrophilic head likes to stick to, uh, to water. And this is how soap works. So when you wash your hands, uh, then soap washes away the dirt stuck into the fat or grease uh, on your hands. And uh, this here is a micelle. But uh, in this case, uh, this micelle has water suspended in oil, but it can also go the other way in case when you wash your hands, then obviously the, the opposite happens. So you have grease stuck in uh, water. But uh, yeah, surfactant means a surface active agent and uh, it consists of uh, these two main parts that you need to remember. What surfactants do is they decrease the surface tension and what we intend to reach is a concentration of surfactants, which is called uh, the critical micelle concentration, where we can get stable droplets, where uh, the surface tension significantly drops beyond uh, this concentration or, or at this concentration level. And uh, for example, water by itself has a surface tension of 72 uh, millinewtons per meter which uh, we had in the table in the previous slide. And if we add the surfactant called uh, tween, tween 10 to be specific, then uh, above the critical micelle concentration, surface tension becomes 30 millinewtons per meter. So that's this uh, significant drop. And at this concentration, we can get stable droplets. And uh, for this video, that was all. That, uh, that I wanted to say. So we went over uh, Jung's law, then Laplace law, capillary pressure, and then surfactants and their function. So this is what you need to remember to, to start with droplets. Mm -hmm.